So yesterday we started talking about how to make or find the truth of a character, how to make them believable, how to make them relatable. And today we're going to talk about how to get into that character. Hi, I'm GR. This is Player Base, which is a channel about ludology, which is the study of the dynamics of play. We're doing a series on tabletop role-playing games, and particularly right now, a series on creating or embodying a character. And this is just as true for Dungeon Masters and Game Masters as it is for player characters. For, for, so people playing on either side of the table, this is equal, applicable. So if you're worried, oh, I'm a Dungeon Master, I can't, this applies to you too. Why does it apply to you? Because uh, getting into character, once you have a character who is dynamic and engaging and also believable, Getting into character makes actually making the game engaging and fun and enthralling a lot easier and a lot less head work because you're automatically thinking about, oh, okay, where's this person coming from? Because you're acting from that perspective, right? And the way that you do that is, you know, all the videos, the last four, five, or six that we've been talking about are really about getting ready to get into character. That's the secret. If you have an idea of, what the character's doing, which, you know, it, it's a power fantasy. You get to choose. You can make it as flawed or flawless as, as you want. But you have a, an idea of that, and then you have an idea of within that framework where they are in the world, like what, how the world is going to respond to them and how they're going to respond to the world, uh, what about them uh, is motivating for them because of the choices that they have to make. You've done all that work which doesn't take very long. It's really just the way that you're thinking about it. Now you're sitting in that character and making choices and acting from that perspective. And when you do it from an understanding of who the character is, it's not an intellectual process. It's not a, a process where you're looking at the character sheet all the time. I have this joke that I use all the time. It's like there's certain players who like to play their character and there's certain players who like to play their character sheet. And... I don't know if by now you can tell which side of that coin I lay on and also which one I'm advocating for, but it's the left-hand path. And the reason for that is because even in a beer and pretzels game, if you're simply thinking about, if you're simply sitting, not even thinking about it, that's the wrong way, if you're sitting in where the character is in the reality of their world, then it's no longer make-believe. You're just acting appropriately. And it's really engaging because you get the, you get in that moment, you get the, the true promise, the real gift of a role-playing game, which is, you know, temporary freedom from being in the bondage of your own ego because you don't have to be you for a while. So you're freed from the prison of self, which, you know, outside of, you know, transcendental meditation and all kinds of things which are dangerous and illegal, you, there aren't many ways of getting out of uh, for any given period of time without tremendous strain on the body and mind. And here, you get to do it just by doing this. And I got to tell you, that alone is worth the price of admission. So if you have an idea of who the character is and you believe in that character, even in the, the, the fantastical realm that you're playing in, because you understand their motivations and they're working within a reasonable framework. You know, like yesterday we were talking about the Minotaur librarian uh, in the Rare Books Department. That guy is not going to be out there trying to open up fruit stands on the side. He's already got a job, right? And you know that because that's the character that you made, hypothetically. Or well, whatever it is, you know, if you, maybe you made a fruit stand character uh, of some unknown origin. Whatever it is, you already know where that character lies, what their what the lines of force are for them and the cause and effect are even within the, the magical or the science fictional realm that you're playing in. And that's all you got to do. You don't have to look at the sheet because you already know what they have, right? You know, you may forget that they get a plus five to this or a plus six to that, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Most of that stuff is made up by the dungeon master on the fly anyway. Oh, yeah. It's a game of make-believe. And the purpose of the rules is to give you a framework within which your mind will believe your actions in the world because the rules create a haptic feedback that approximate the phenomenology of the world. It's not a version of Monopoly with magical swords. Let me know if that resonates true with you. And uh, if you need more clarification, uh, we'll talk about it again tomorrow. Um, but until then, I'm GR and this is Player Based.